Hey guys, Joe Pye here at Advanced Innovations. Welcome back to the shop. You know, if you had just recently watched the video where I drilled the 14 hole pattern around this hub, you'll know that this piece here was a remnant piece of scrap. Uh, actually not scrap. So to anyone that said, oh, I bet he's going to use it again, well, you are absolutely right. Anything like this that you've made that has a precision pattern in it, what's the point in throwing it away? What I'm going to do is I'm going to piece, put a piece of double stick tape on here and I'm going to put a dowel pin in and I'm going to adhere this to this plate with double stick tape. Now you're going to say, well, it's not going to hold up under the forces of machining, but when it's held this way in the vise, it's absolutely not going to move unless it shears off the dowel pin or gauge pin that you're using. Now, I had an aha moment from a subscriber or a, a comment that if you want to drill a certain number of holes, do you really need that number of holes? And you know, it was an aha moment and absolutely Liam Clink got a shout out to the channel name Liam Clink gave me this one and I don't have an aha moment very often, but I got one this time. This is a 14 hole pattern. All the black lines on here is every other hole. So there are seven black lines on this part for 14 holes. Can you drill a 14 hole pattern with half the number of holes? Can you drill any even number hole pattern with half the number of holes? And the answer is yes. And I tell you, it was an aha moment. I'm only using the black ones now, okay? Pay attention. Everybody. Here it comes. All right, resting on these two holes, bumping up against this side of the part, you can see that when the drill comes down it's going to drill in between the two holes right there's hole number one if you move over to the other black hole same parallel it is now in line with the hole incredible back to this one in between the holes now when you do this your height will change. The height of the setup will change because the drop of the pins is going to change how the part sits, registers on the parallel. So the depth of your feature will change. But absolutely, so absolutely yes, you do not need 14 holes to do a 14 hole pattern. Seven holes will do just fine. We could do this one of two ways now, starting to drill the hub. We could use the hole as a rotational bump stop which would be the fastest way to do it or you could drill two holes in a backing plate one at a quarter inch one at an eighth inch and use this just like a rotary indexer that you would buy in the store I would say if it's a critical setup the two holes is the same or excuse me the two holes would be the better but now a lot of you guys are gonna say I oh, man, I don't know about matching two holes exactly the same especially if you triangulated these or rectangle drilled these and didn't do it on a rotary table. The distance between centers could be off by a half a thou or a thou, whatever, depending on what kind of math, readout, dial, equipment that you have. The center to center could be off. That being said, you do not need two perfect holes in order to index something precision. You just don't. You have one hole that's going to control location. It's not going anywhere. It is trapped. What you need to do now is control rotation. You can control rotation with a hole, yes, but it has to be an incredibly precision hole in order for it to line up with all of these, or that hole can be a slot. Because when this pin comes around, it's going to find that slot, boom, it's going to drop in it's not going to rotate okay the rotation is now locked the concentricity is now locked with a hole and a slot it does not have to be two holes don't get caught up in that thinking you can't make a precision fixture because you don't have a digital readout that's not true I'm gonna take you over to the mill we're gonna punch a 250 hole in the backing plate we're gonna pop a little slot at uh, I'm gonna say let's say 30 thou on either side of the one inch because this is a two inch center there you go, two inch centers. Quarter inch in the center, 
30 thou on either side of the projected one inch regardless of how bad your pattern is within reason that slot is going to do just fine let's move over to the mill get this done drill the hub okay for the initial drilling operations i am keeping the table locked at x y zero there is nothing precision about this setup i am tracking an inch and a half off my movable jaw the part is parallel it's square on the ends it's square on the end that's up against the stop now and it's there for a reason. I'm going to put the quarter inch hole on the mark. I'm going to move one inch back and we're going to put that slot in that I spoke of. So there is nothing that is edge found or indicated at this point. This is completely by eye. Two thirty four pilot drill WD forty as a lubricant, fourteen hundred RPM. And yes, I'm going to slow it down. It's about two hundred RPM. Six fluid high speed steel reamer WD forty lubricant. Now if the backlash on your machine is such that you just don't trust moving the table in different directions and that is understandable then make sure that all the movements you make with your table you finish off the dial in the same direction. I always finish clockwise with my number. I will always go past my number and come back to it. That's why you're going to see the table jump beyond the one inch and return. And for those of you that are going to ask why not to use an end mill and a chuck, the chuck is connected to the arbor with a taper, any side load could break the taper and all of a sudden you have a flying chuck, which is novel if you have a circus, but uh, it's not what you want in a machine shop. Change over to an eighth inch end mill, raise the table, make that slot. Okay, quarter inch pilot hole, 125 wide slot, 30 thou off center from the one inch each way. Now the reason that I did it this way, I've seen other YouTubers create fixtures and when they're done creating the fixture they need to pick everything up all over again. If you just created a feature, well you know where that feature is, make your offset right then and there and you've got it made. I know that this 250 hole is zero, 0 and I know that on the x-axis from the stop it's not going to migrate so I do not need to set my x distance right now. It's already set. I'm going to stand this plate up. The only thing I will need to do at that point is edge find the actual hub and off we go. Let's do that. Okay, this is the final setup. The plate that I just drilled is free floating. If this was a production setup, I would clamp it, make sure nothing moves. And the reason I'm doing it this way is it's a lot quicker to mess with one pin than it is to mess with two each time. The part will stay basically trapped. You can see the double stick tape keeping the hub turning at the same rate with the drive plate or with the index plate. Pin passes through, center of the slot, rotation is very tight. The X center is exactly the same as when the plate was drilled, still up against the stop. X still set on zero, I promise I haven't moved it. We're going to pick up the front edge of this with an edge finder, move halfway into the center. I'm going to center drill everything, 
drill everything and then ream everything. There were some comments about that in the past. And for me, yes, it was quicker to change the drill and the reamer than it was to change the pins. But with a central pivot point and an indexing pin feature like this, this will be exceptionally quick to rotate this part. This setup is probably much better suited for multiple pieces than just one, but I wanted to show you another use for the blank that dropped out of the hub. Alright, let's drill it. Alright, quick setup tip here. Try to keep the distance between your chuck and your workpiece to a minimum. That is a very good suggestion. And I usually set mine based on the length of my longest tool. In this case, it's my reamer. So I'm going to make sure that my reamer goes in and out comfortably. Which it does, and I don't think that that's just all that too bad. So we're going to leave it right where it is. Set your gap to your longest tool. Just make sure you can get the longest tool in and out. And away you go. Real time right now, 11.53 And yes, this could be done on an arbor in an indexer. Let's just assume you don't have an indexer. Keep on going. Because that's what this channel is all about. Time check 1157. Okay, for anybody wondering why I keep taking the pin out of the back and putting it through from the front, keep in mind that the back is a slot. And if I were to attempt to find that hole in that slot every time, I'd be fiddling around forever. So it's a lot easier to put the pin in from the front and let it find its own way left to right. Okay, here's a question for all you old guys out there. What toy does that hub remind you of? Let's see how old you are. All right, I'm going to put the 126 reamer in. This is a reverse flute reamer I'm using. A spiral flute reamer. You can see it is not straight. It is curved. These are designed to get the chips out of a bottomed hole. This is about a 120 diameter hole. This is a 126 reamer. I am not going to slow this down. Same speed as the drill, 1,460 RPM. I'm going to push it right to the bottom and pull it out. I will not peck this hole. I might mess around with the first one just to set the stop. Other than that, we're just going to go for it. Okay. 
it should be relatively easy to break that tape bond since it's not a whole lot of surface area. I'm going to take it over and bump it on the scotch Bray wheel and we'll assemble it and take a look. I'm looking forward to it. Okay, real time it is 12.14, so this didn't take very long. I brushed the outside with a soft scotch Bray wheel. Took a high speed deburring tool to the holes. And this is the fun part of the project. Let's lace this thing together. See how it looks. Looking forward to it. Yep, I am having as much fun as you think I'm having. I'm loving this. This is awesome. I like it. Had a bad day cutting those off. Check that out. Now you got to be as curious as I am as to exactly how concentric this thing spins. And I'm loving that. That's absolutely beautiful. Let's dry off the fixture. Let's take it back on the fixture plate. Take a look. It's pretty spot on for the straight out of the box. <laughs> I like it. All right, guys. Well, there's nothing to it. That's just a fancy way of uh, making a part with a part with a part. If you got the time to spend, do it in your shop. It's a lot of fun. Just to prove that you can do whatever you need to do without all the fancy tools. Do save the parts that fall out. You never know when you're going to need them again. And I think I will probably buff this off. Yeah, why not? I should just do that right now. Let's do that and uh, come back to you. Right back. Okay, the spokes are not secured in the hub. They are just pushed into the reamed holes. I could put this back on the lathe on a quarter inch arbor, which I probably will do. Sanded them down a little bit. And there has been nothing here that's trued. And boy, that camera doesn't lie. That thing is running so smooth. I am really pleased with that. Let's get down and check out the horizontal whip. Love it. Alright. Well, I hope you got something out of that project. I got a free wagon wheel out of it. You know, if I ever get around to cutting these pieces off and maybe fitting a steel rim or a rubber rim around the outside, I will show you that in the future. But thank you very much to everybody that tuned in on the first one. I hope you enjoyed this one. And I hope you got something out of the fact that you can make an indexer from the part and make a part from the indexer. So, there you go. Thank you very much for watching. Joe Pye Advanced Innovations in Austin, Texas. I'm out. <laughs>